verse number one. It says this, As the heart panteth after the water, brook, so panteth my soul after Thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before Him? We'll read verse 1 one more time. As the deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after Thee, O God. Amen. If you lay your Bibles and lift your hands to the Lord, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You, Lord Jesus, for what You're getting ready to do here in this service and how You're getting ready to move and minister to our hearts, God. Lord, we thank You, Jesus, Lord, for what Your Spirit, God, is getting ready to perform and do. God, You're getting ready to operate in this place, God. In the name of Jesus, we're dependent upon You today. In the name of Jesus, Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. I want to preach for the next few minutes on, I, I'm thirsty for God. I'm thirsty for God. We all know the feeling of extreme thirst uh, many of us know how it feels to uh, go work all day and uh, and be very thirsty. I remember uh, just here recently at uh, at Brother Sister Thomas's house and how I'd worked all day and was so thirsty and so uh, dehydrated and my uh, my bones my, my my muscles was cramping up. Because of extreme thirst, we can understand that there is an extreme thirst in our human body. We all can understand that we can live longer without food than we can water. We all know that you can go 40 days without food, but many times you can only go 3 or 4 days without water because the body is mainly made out of water and you can live longer without food than you can water. I want to tell you today that there's nothing that's more satisfying than a, than a good cold glass of water after you worked out in the heat. We can agree with that today that there's nothing that can satisfy like a, like a, a cup of water. Amen. Or a bottle of water. You know, you might be able to get you a pop or a or an L8 or something like that, but that doesn't satisfy now uh, like water does because uh, water is what's going to quench your thirst. Water is what's going to satisfy you. Water is what's going to sustain you through uh, your day. The water is what's going to get you through every every uh, many of your day. If you don't get to go, if you go all day without getting a drink, you're not going to work very long. But uh, in, in Psalms chapter 42 verse one, it links the spiritual thirst of the the, the spiritual thirst with the physical thirst. When he said, as the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my heart, my soul after thee. I want to tell you today that there is a, 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 a link together of a spiritual thirst uh, with the physical thirst. And we understand and know that the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 6, said, Blessed are they that which, uh, that which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. The Bible says a lot about thirsty people and thirsty individuals. All throughout the Bible we can read of how people are thirsty and you can read in the book of John chapter number 4 and 5 through 15 when Jesus met the woman at Jacob's well and Jesus asked her and said give me drink. And and Bible says, verse 7 says, uh, well, uh, uh, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Uh, that lets me know that Jesus uh, was thirsty. Jesus came to the well and He was asked for a drink from the well, from uh, Jacob's well. Jesus uh, talking to the woman at the well. Jesus knowing that her story that was one that was filled with many disappointments. She had a thirst that was more than just a physical thirst, but it was a spiritual thirst because life had been in a way that had treated her very badly. It hadn't treated her good. All throughout her life, she had many disappointments throughout her life. She had failed marriages, and she was looking for satisfaction in all kinds of different ways. And many 
many times you heard a saying that says, looking for love in all the wrong places. And many times we look for love and look for satisfaction in all the wrong places. And she was looking for, for, for peace and, and, and to something to quench that thirst with physical pleasures and fulfillment by having other people in their life, amen, to try to bring her happiness and try to bring her, her fulfillment and try to bring her peace of mind. But I want to tell you something, there's nothing in this world that can satisfy you like Jesus can. I say that only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only He can take a life and make it whole. He'll give you peace like you've never knew love and joy and heaven too go only Jesus can satisfy your soul Jesus was talking to the woman and he offered her living water that would quench her inner, her inner thirst amen because she was on a search throughout her life she was searching for a fulfillment to fulfill that thirst that was inside her soul and many people all around this city and in this church they're searching for a fulfillment. They're searching for some kind of satisfaction. Just some kind of peace. Just something that will quench the thirst of their soul. Something that will quench the longing that's down deep inside their soul. There's so many people that's lost in this world. Amen. And they're looking for peace. And they're not finding none. They're looking for something. And they cannot find find it. But the Bible says in verse number 10, it says Jesus answered and said unto her, he said, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it was that said unto thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked of him that he and he would have given thee living water. Jesus has a water that's greater than anything the world can ever offer you. Jesus has a water that's greater than anything in the world can give you. It is living water. Amen. And the spiritual thirst goes all the way throughout eternity. If you die lost, Luke chapter 16, 19 through 24, it reads of the rich man, amen, who lifted up his eyes in hell, being tormented. And verse number 24 says, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip his, the tip of his finger in water water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in these flames. I will tell you that the thirst it will go even all the way to eternity if you don't get it filled on this earth. I mean although the rich man died his thirst lived on. Although he died in the physical body his thirst went on. But I got good news for you today when Jesus stood on the cross. He endured and suffered through the thirst of hell. He suffered through the thirst when he looked and he said I thirst. He went through all the pain and he went all through all the sufferings so we wouldn't have to thirst, thirst anymore. He gave us that water so we don't have to thirst anymore. Jesus suffered through the thirst. He thirsts so we don't have to thirst. Amen. He suffered so we don't have to suffer. So we can have eternal life. Paul, he endured thirst on this earth. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11 and 27, it said that he was in, we in, in weariness and painfulness and watchings awful, often and hunger and thirst and fastings often and cold and nakedness. Paul endured this, the, the natural uh, thirst, but I've got news for you. I don't believe today that Paul will have to endure the thirst that would last for eternity. When you're in the middle of hell and you, and there are things falling apart and when you're in the middle of hell and flames are burning you and you're suffering that eternal damnation to your soul. Amen. Revelation chapter 7 verse number 16 and 17 says they, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb 
which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into living foundations of water and God shall wipe away wipe away the tears from their eyes and I'm going to end by saying I know I'm at the end at the end by saying that in verse in 20, Revelation 22 verse 17 says and the spirit and the bride say Come, let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is, that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him drink, or let him take of the water of life freely. God has, let's all clap our hands to the Lord. God has that fulfilling for a man's thirst. God, I am thirsty for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I appreciate the Lord. I thought about it as Brother Markham was was uh, uh, talking about being thirsty. You know, I, I thought about uh, the uh, uh, the soldier that ran into jail's tent, and he said, "Give me some water." And instead of water, she brought him milk. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, when you're thirsty, ain't nothing else is going to fit the bill. Amen. But uh, uh, you know, if I'm going to drink something, I want to make sure I'm drinking what's right. Amen. Praise God, Brother Watson. Your turn. All right, I got in uh, First Chronicles chapter 21. I'm going to read you one verse. And it's verse 24. And King David said to Onan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the price, right. full price. For I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. Amen. Is that on? I don't think it is. No. I don't know how long it is. Oh, okay. All right. That's better. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so David said, you may be seated. David said that he was not going to offer to God from somebody else. You know, it's easy to offer that, isn't it? If it's coming free, amen, you can give that away all day, can't you? But when you, when you have to uh, dish out yourself, then it's, it's a little harder to do. Amen. And so David was that way. See, David had a heart. To serve the Lord, didn't he? He had a heart to do what's right. Amen. And we're in a situation here with, uh, you know, David's making this choice. I ain't going to offer to God that which costs me anything, nothing. He said, I'm going to pay a sacrifice in doing my sacrifices unto the Lord. Amen. I'll tell you what, you can go out and buy you something that you desire to have. And, and if, it's, if it's something you really want, you'll go up and pay for it, ain't you? And that's the way the Word of God ought to be. That's the way living for God ought to be. That's the way we ought to be in our own lives. Amen. That we would stress our self forward and do everything within our power to please our Maker and Creator. Amen. Hallelujah. It tells us in, Psalm, uh, in Proverbs 23 and 23, it says to buy the truth and sell it not. And also wisdom instructions and understanding that all comes together amen we've got to purchase this amen we, we, we that's what that's what our position is amen as a child of God we've got to put forth an effort to make sure we're walking in truth 
and make sure we're not being uh, led in the wrong direction. It's our responsibility, church, amen, for all of that, amen, to have truth. Amen. We got to what? Study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed. Right and dividing the word of truth. Amen. And that's what we've got to do. And we've got to put ourselves forward to do it. You know, we can come to church every day and we can sit on the pews and we can just listen to what the preacher says. And, 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 I, and I've got all the confidence in Brother, brother, brother Thomas. Amen. And he's going to preach it right because I've heard it too long. But that's, that's not the deal. The Bible tells us to study. Amen. We follow up on what he says. As long as he's in the book, as long as he's, he's preaching it as he should be preaching it, amen. We got an obligation to that. Amen. And, and whether, whether it's wisdom, understanding, amen, or what, truth, we've got to hold on to that with everything and dig after it. We can't just play around with it. Amen. We're looking at a situation here where, where, that David had. You know, the Bible says Satan. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And you know, David should have known not to do that. You know, but he just, he had something in his heart and in his mind that he, he, he must have felt like, well, it'll make something great that I've done is to go ahead and number Israel and, and try to increase the armies or whatever, you know, to, uh, it was just kind of lifting up. The devil will put things in your mind, in my mind, it, it, that'll, that'll cause you to step out of place if you're not awful careful. Amen. And we've got to be careful with that. We've got to stay in the word we got to stay with the truth we got to have the wisdom of God we need it from him we get it from him we get it from his word because it's the greatest wisdom that you can ever have you can go nowhere and find the wisdom that you can get from the book of God amen the word of God there's no place that you can find it there's not a book ever been written amen and so oh my goodness <laughs> anyway, he, 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 he talked to Joab, and he, he had him, you know, and Joab didn't want to do it. He tried to talk, talk, talk to David out of it because he said, the Lord can make so many more times out, 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 of, out of the army. I mean, you know, we know that God has made it so that we can understand that it doesn't, God doesn't have to have the majority. He doesn't have to have, uh, you know, a, a great huge army to, uh, to battle this thing. You know, he, were, he can work with one or two. You know, God don't have to have it all. I mean, he's got it all, and he's got all power in heaven and earth. And so God wants us to put our trust in him regardless of the circumstances, the situations we're in. Amen. And we've got to realize that we are serving a God that's got all power in heaven and earth. And we need to stand by his word and allow that to be our guide. Amen. Throughout this life. Amen. And so he, he, he didn't prevail. Joab didn't prevail, amen, over David. And David commanded him to go out from Dan to Beersheba and to get all that number. And, and what, a, what a number it was, amen. There was somewhere like a million of 750,000, uh, you know, registered, ready to go out to war, amen. That's a lot of people. But David must have wanted to get, see how big it was, and he must have wanted to do, do something to kind of lift up his kingdom and I think I've already said that but nevertheless amen uh, he got in trouble with the Lord and the thing of it was David is is very easy to uh, fall on his knees you know and I'm going to skip a bunch that I ain't got time you know okay amen you know the story I know you do you read it amen and so uh, he he fell down on his knees because Gad, uh, his, his seer, came to him and, and told him, amen, choose between these three things, amen. He gave him three choices. But David said, no, I'm, not, I'm in a straight. I'm not, I'm not going to make no decisions. I'm going to fall into the hands of the mighty God, amen. And that's what he did. He, he allowed the Lord to, to bring the judgment on him. You know, it costed 70,000 soldiers. 
Amen. 70,000 of Israel. Just because David stepped out of the line. That's right. David didn't lose his life, but David, David pleaded for the, for the people. Amen. And so, God it wants, wants us to be humble before Him. He wants us to fall down on our knees when we, we, we get caught into something and quickly make it right with God. Amen. It's not that we should go out every day and do that. Amen. That's, that's everyday sinning. But we, we need to keep our hearts, our minds clean before God and always be humble before God because God knows your heart from one end to the other and you don't know your heart yourself. And you've got to have the Word of God to establish your own ways and your own thinking and your own mind and your own soul. It's got to be, hallelujah, in the, in the process. Amen. Hallelujah. God's a good God. And I'm going to tell you. What, let's do I'm going to leave you with this. What you do, let it be a cost. Yeah. Study for the truth of God's Word. And I know you've been taught it and you've studied it. But study more. Yeah. There's more there yeah. than you can ever think. Yeah. Hallelujah. For God. For your own life. And we've got, we've got, we've got to do it. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. I, I thought as he was talking about, you know, David said he, that he wasn't going to offer up anything that didn't cost him something. Amen. And I preached a message, and it's been several years back, called Living in the Wake of Praise. And, uh, you know, anytime you go out on the water, you know, the boats that's going down through there, they, they make that wake. And, uh, you know, skiers and different ones are behind them boats. And, and, you know, the only reason they're having any fun because there's something up in front of them that's got the power. Yeah. Ain't that right? But they're riding for free. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to come into anything that doesn't cost me something. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to ride, or ride the wake of somebody else's praise. Yeah. I don't want to ride the wake of somebody else's worship. I don't want to ride the wake of somebody else's sacrifice. Amen. I want to be the boat. I want to be the one making the wake. Amen. I want to be the one. Amen. Praise God. Pushing forward. Brother Chris Lips. Brother Watson, I'm going to have a talk with you after service. I won't tell you what yet, but we're going to have a talk. All right, we're going quickly. Very, very quickly. I didn't have any computer ink, so i got to do it this way. So everybody stand, please. We've already prayed, so let's just go straight on. 2 Kings 2 and 13. It says, He took all... He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Now verse 14. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha crossed over. Right. Now, one more scripture that Brother Watson has already quoted, Proverbs 23 and 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. You can be seated. In the corporate world, in the business world, a company has to convince you, has to be able to tell you that their product is the best. It's the greatest thing since buttered popcorn. But they have to find ways, they have to have, find slogans, mottos to be able to convince you. Nike, Nike is convinced that not everybody that wears their product is an athlete. So they have to convince you 
that whatever you do, slip on their product, and you will just do it. American Express is convinced that their product is so important, so needed, that you should never leave home without it. Diet Pepsi is convinced that their product is the greatest thing out there and there's no other product like it. Therefore, you can drink it, stand up and say, you got the right one, baby. <laughs> now, the one that struck me, Farmers Insurance is so convinced that when their customers go through such turmoil, such torture, such stress, such worry, such chaos, that it doesn't matter because they got you covered. So farmer's insurance will tell you, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Now they don't say it like that. That was the country version. So that is the title of my message. We know a thing or two, or two because we've seen a thing or two. So let me just tell you something. This right here is the cleanest water that you'll ever find. The water that cleanses you in the name of Jesus is the cleanest water you ever find. It will take care of any situation you have. It will take care of any filthiness you have. It will remove any sort of situation that you think is clinged on to your life. It will handle it. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is the greatest high this world will ever know. The world's been looking for highs, trying to find that, that first high that they've had, but they can never find it. But this right here, you can get over and over and over. The power of the Holy Ghost is the greatest thing. You ladies, make sure your hair is uncut, not necessarily long, but uncut, because when you have the Holy Ghost and you have uncut hair, you have power with the angels. And the angels will help you when your children get sick, you'll be able to let your hair down, place it over your child, and pray. No doctor can do that. No physician, no nurse can do that. There's power in that name. These kids, when they get the Holy Ghost, and they're laying in their bed, and something scares them at night, they no longer have to run to their mommy and daddy and say, I'm scared. All they got to do is raise up in their bed and say, in the name of Jesus, and everything will go away. A lightning storm will come, and the parents will come in there and say, baby, you okay? You all right? It's going to be okay? Said, I got this, mom. Jesus has got this. I'm okay with it. Jesus has got it. You don't have to worry about it. Wish that one had to worry about it. The power of God is greater than anything that we have ever had, ever seen. And how do we know this? Because we've seen it work. How many times have we seen people healed? How many times have we seen people delivered? How many times have we seen people in a financial crisis and boom, it's fixed? Christie's uncle, we were practically planning his funeral. And now the doctors and nurses are wanting to meet the person who they thought was dead. They said a 37-year-old man came in with the exact same thing, no health issues, boom, he died. Christie's uncle, because everybody's praying, the power of Jesus, the power of his name, boom, he's still living. He's coming home. He's still got a long road, but God ain't done yet. If you're not convinced that the product you're selling, th this is one of the highlights, one of the golden rules of companies, no matter where you go, if you are not convinced that your product is the best thing, then you can't sell it to anybody. You ain't going to move that product. So if you are convinced that this is the greatest truth, this is the greatest doctrine, this is the greatest lifestyle, but you get outside and you see, people see you not delivering that expectation you have, they're not going to buy into your truth. Now, we can't sell it to them. 
We can't even give it to them, but we can direct them to the one that can. Yeah, all right. We can give them directions to Jesus' house yeah. and say, I can't give you this. I can't even give you what I have, but I can share my wisdom because we know this, because we've seen this. Jesus is the way, but if people out in the, the, the world aren't going to recognize that you have this as your greatest asset, they're not going to believe it. Brother Douglas, I've, I've heard that message and I know what you're talking about. I am persuaded. If you're not persuaded that this is it, if you're not persuaded that this is the way, the truth, and the life, that this water washes everything away, everything that we've been secretly hiding over the years, trying to trying to hope that the person next to me doesn't find out that I've done this and I've done that, and even though I've been baptized, it still affects me and hurts me and it kills me, and I just don't want anyone to know about it. It's already gone. It's already flushed down the drain, down in the depths of the sea to never be remembered again. This is the truth. Jesus... Oh, Elijah, just real quick, Elijah was standing by the, by the bank of the Jordan. And he had already lost his master. He had already seen everything that God was doing. He had already seen what God's power can do. All the miracles. Now the, the Bible only records seven miracles that Elijah had done. But that's all that's been recorded. We don't know if anything is else. But Elisha was standing there. He says, where is the God? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? I know that he's done things. I've seen that he's done things. Where is this God? I know he's with me. Where is this Lord God of Elijah? He said, I know that I have the right one, and I'll say baby. Imagine if Elijah did say that. I have the right one. I have the best one. I have what it takes. What if he says, where is the Lord God, or where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he smites the water, says, this truth, I'm never leaving home without it. This is my American Express. I am going to never leave home without it. Everywhere I go, no matter if I get double blessing, doesn't matter. I'm never leaving home without it. So where is the Lord God of Elijah? This is the way. And Elisha went on and did 14 recorded miracles, even one after his death. But unless he was thoroughly convinced, persuaded, this wouldn't have worked. This wouldn't have happened. The product that he was selling the truth that he was buying into and trying to get others to be persuaded, to be convinced that nothing would have ever happened if he didn't believe it deep down in his heart. So this is the way. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We've seen what happens when we use the name Jesus to every aspect of our life. Every corner every secret place, every open place, every aspect of our life, we have what it is and we want to give it away to others so they will be persuaded. Amen. Amen. Years ago when we were selling fireworks, you know, uh, uh, we used to, when we started selling them there in Berea, and uh, we sold a, a firework called a, a Starball. And it was just a little bitty thing. And it had a little bit of a cost to it. And those customers, they would come walking down along and looking at all the fireworks and stuff. And, is there anything I can do to help you? And I'd be sitting there in a the chair and they'd, no, no, we're just looking. I just went, I didn't pay no attention to that. It's got on up. And I just started walking. I said, now this one. As soon as I started talking, they just fall down the road, uh, down the rows of table. 
And, and then we'd get to the star ball, and they'd look at it, and I'd say, this thing right here is amazing. I said, you know, you light it, and I said, it'll take on, and it'd shoot up in the air like my glasses. And I never failed to sell one of them. I sold one. I sold out every year with those Starbucks. Amen. Because it was excitement. Amen. Praise God. Brother Lips, as he was preaching, made me think of, of Elijah and Elisha. Amen. When Elisha took that, took that mantle and he struck the water with it, amen, the people, the prophets that were sitting up on the hill, amen, they looked and said, Said the, the God of Elijah is up on Elisha now. Amen. You see, that's the advertisement. People's got to see some excitement in our life. They got to see something stirring up in our heart. There's got to be something, amen, that says, hey, I want to buy what you got. Amen. I want a part of what you got to offer. Amen. Praise God. Brother Eric. You'll go with me to uh, 2 Kings chapter 5. Um, oddly, I feel like I received the first part of this message a year ago. And I wrote it down and had some thoughts with it. And I feel like things have changed a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to be, you know, we try to be, like you said, led by the Lord at all times. And I feel like when I was praying here the other night, it shifted a little bit. So it said, now Naaman captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And I'm only going to leave you with that, and you all can be seated. Uh, we don't have time to read the full story of Naaman. But when I think about Naaman, the first thing I see is a need. And it makes me think of my own life. Do I believe the word of God? Do I trust the living God? Am I a doer of the word or am I a hearer only? So this summer, you know, you all have heard me testify, uh, has just been total turmoil for me. You know, not just with school, but with every other avenue. And like Naaman, I realize that we have needs that only God can fix. I can go to the doctor and they can tell me something good and it will never fix me. So as I ponder on Naaman, he was lacking. And he goes, and we all know the story, he takes all of this great stuff. He takes it all. But he was a leper. He had all these wonderful things and he was told something very simple. Get in the water get in the water. And it said he went away wroth. How many of us is that? How many of us, church, are we living with name and spirits? We may have been washed one time. And I'll tell you this, it's total transparency. I was walking around the back of the church the other night and I was praying. You know, usually we pray and we go on and we talk the whole time. And I felt like the Lord pressed to me. It's like, Eric, are you ready to die again? Nobody said nothing. What's that mean, Lord? Am I ready to die again? Because I've been born again in the water and the spirit, right? right? Are you ready to be washed again? Because we carry these things. And we say, Lord, I've repented of my sins. But what am I carrying around? Am I carrying around a hateful name and attitude? Am I carrying around this spirit that says, God, I don't want to do it that way. But I want you to do it that way. But I don't want to see, I don't see it that way. I don't necessarily think that that's the way I've got to do it. We can talk about doctrines. We can talk about all these great things. You know, Galatians 3.27. You know, if you've been baptized with Christ, you put on Christ. You've been buried with Christ. If we don't do these things, are we naming? If I don't live every day, because my Bible says to die daily, yeah. am I naming? Yeah. I don't believe i got to do that, God. I told you to die daily. Yeah. But I came up here this one time. I sit on the pew. I play the drums. 
I do children's church. And as I was walking around in the back of this church, you see, I feel like I've had a shift in my walk with God, my relationship with God, how I perceive God, how I perceive issues. You see, before, we call Jesus Father because he is the Father. Isaiah 9, 6 says that he's the Father. Do I treat him like Dad? Is he Dad? Because we talk about everybody else maybe not knowing the truth, and they talk about Jesus like this far-off God. Do I treat him like that? The book of Job, during our tent revival, you know, when you're going through every storm and you're praying for everybody else and you're dying on the inside, it's hard. And the book of Job assures me that Satan, before he can do anything to you, he had to go to God. So all this stuff you have going on in your life, all the issues we're facing, he had to go to God. And Satan's not omnipresent. So that means he had to go every single time. Lord. Because he starts to call him Lord. I got Brother Denny down there. Let me afflict him with this. And so Brother Denny's doing all this. Lord. I got Brother Douglas down there. Let me afflict him with all of this. Lord. I got Sister Gooden down there. Let me afflict her with all this. And he ain't omnipresent. So I'm here to tell you, if we just reach for the throne, he can't stop everybody. He's only given what God allows him to have. And so again, as I was walking around in the back of this place, I feel like the Lord took me to Peter. We all know the story about Peter in the boat. And we talk about how Peter, you know, Lord, bid me to come to you. Let me walk out here, Lord. And we focus so much on Peter's faith. You know, so here he is. He's walking, right? And he saw everything else going on around him. He's seen all that water. He's seen all this horrible stuff. He was never going to make it. Peter was never going to touch the Lord. Why? You're telling me that God Almighty out there walking in the water didn't know that Peter would fail. Why would he allow him to do that? And as I was walking around thinking about that, Peter had a certain level of faith because Jesus told him he doubted. Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Peter's level of faith had to die. It had to be buried again because I can't be resurrected with the same level of faith that I've got right now. Every day, I have to go into that water. Every day, I got to get in His presence. How do I get into that presence? I worship. I worship. I've taken on the name. I worship. Lord, cleanse me, Jesus. Every day. Peter again. So he's coming. And the Lord knew he would cry out. See, like I said with Job, before the worlds were created, the Lord knew Peter would fall into that water. He knew that he would see that storm and that he would fail. But out of that water, I can imagine, Peter, man, I should have stayed in the boat. What if I die? Here I got Jesus walking on the water looking at me. I'm walking with the guy. I've seen him do miracles, and I don't even have enough faith to touch him. Peter, it was never about you. I knew you would fail because I wanted to reach out and get you. And church, that's the faith that we got to have. That's the faith that I want to have. It ain't about me. I will never be good enough. It's about Jesus. The whole book is about Jesus. And we have got to get in that water. We can't be walking around like Naaman saying, Lord, I ain't going to get up there and worship. We owe him too much. I don't want that name and spirit that says, man, I got to gripe and I got to complain about everything that I do. We got to let all that go. Because what happened to Naaman? Naaman's faith died in that water and he was resurrected a new person. Peter. And again, I probably won't even need the last minute. Peter makes an interesting statement. You know, he's talking to Jesus and, uh, Jesus goes to wash his feet. He 
He's like, not so, Lord. I can't let you wash my feet. You're the master. You're the king. Why would you wash my feet? Peter, if you don't let me wash all of you, you'll have no part with me. I can't live my life, and you can't live your life on the coattails of one experience. The water, the worship, our praise, letting go, dying daily, it is an everyday process that we have to adjust to. And it ain't easy. One of the worst things I think that we do is we're not as transparent with our faults. I gripe. I gripe about things I shouldn't. I gripe about piddly things that don't matter. Lord, help me with that. If I don't bring it to him and I don't say, Lord, wash me. This was the last verse and I said I got it a year ago. It's Luke chapter 7, 31, 35. And when all this was given to me, I really didn't know how this was going to apply, this last verse. And I made a comment to Brother Denny on Saturday, and oddly, he made the very same comment. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are likened to children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he hath the devil. The son of man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Church, what's holding us back? What excuse am I going to make Sunday, Wednesday? It ain't just a Bible study. This is it. This is it. I got to be washed today because he could come back today. concerning Naaman, it's the spirit and the attitude of Naaman, amen, that if he was not willing to do what was necessary, he had went home and died, yeah, yeah. amen, but when, when somebody began to talk sense to him, he had enough, he had enough sense himself to listen to what the, what the man was saying to him, even though he was somebody that was younger than him, somebody that was under him, amen, he said, you know, you know if it had been something hard, you wouldn't have even thought twice about it, amen, you know, the easiest thing for us to do is just to settle it in our heart and say, I'm going to do what the Lord would have me to do. And that's all He's asking. If we'll just do what He's asking us to do, amen, we can have the desire of our heart. Can we say amen? amen. Praise God. Brother Denny. We can go ahead and clap. Yeah. Give the Lord some hand clap of praise because He deserves everything that we can give Him. Can you say amen? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just thankful to be in the presence of the Lord here tonight. Amen. Thankful for His goodness and His greatness and His love. Thankful for what He brought me from and out of. Ain't you glad that He did that for you? Praise God. Amen. If you'd stand with me all over the house. Amen. We're going to go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Read just a few verses here. I'll be really quick because all I got is nine minutes and something left. Praise the Lord. Amen. But in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we're going to go to verse 2. I'm going to read down to... Uh, Verse 2, 3, and 4, and then we'll skip down to verse 16. But I just want to share with you something that God has put on my heart for, for a little while now, and I just want to share with you here tonight. No other better time but tonight. So in verse 2, it says, And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines, or Philistines, however you want to say it. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, if you'll turn with me down to verse 16. Verse 16 says, And the Philistine drew near, morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. Amen. Now just go ahead and let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over this house. Praise the Lord God. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. Almighty God, Lord, touch every heart, every mind, and every soul. Oh God, Lord, here tonight. God, Lord, as we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, you may be seated. Amen. For the next little bit uh, that I have here, the next eight minutes and something I want to preach to you. Amen. Who's willing to show up? Who's willing to show up? Amen. When all 
all of the God's people, amen, that could fight was on one side of the mountain. And when all of the enemy was on the other side of the mountain, the enemy decided they would send their warrior, their champion, the best that they had. And they sent him down into this valley, amen, to face the champion of God's people. But the king of all Israel would not be willing to go down to fight this champion. Not even none of the people of God would go down to fight this champion that the enemy would send and he would on day one he would come amen in that valley amen and he would begin to just defile the living God amen and they would allow that they would allow that stuff to go on amen they would allow that junk to go on every day for 40 days the enemy would come morning and evening just like he comes and fights you amen every day of your life when you wake up in the morning you face the enemy with some kind of thump something amen and when you in the evening in the afternoon or in the evening evening it's a battle it seems like it's a struggle with all the things that you may face and that you may go through but I feel in my heart and in my mind and my soul God was looking for somebody that would settle it in their mind and their heart and their soul amen that would say I'm willing to go amen when nobody would be willing to go amen who's willing to go into the valley who's willing to fight the enemy the best that the enemy has amen God would send a child God would send his best warrior who was just a child, amen, was just a shepherd boy, amen, who could come, amen, and when he heard, amen, the enemy began to defile the living God, he was already sick, amen, all it took was just one day, one moment when he heard the enemy begin to speak, he began to tell the people of God, is there not a cause, is there not a cause, church, is there not a reason that you're here, is there not a cause that you serve him, Amen. Why do you wake up? Amen. You wake up because he allowed it. You wake up because, amen, he's got a plan. He has a purpose for your life. It doesn't matter if you're little as Sister Olivia. It doesn't matter, amen, if you're as old as me. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're 150 year old. It does not matter. God's got a plan. He has a purpose for you. And if you're a child of the living God and you have the Holy Ghost in you, you're the champion of God because you've got the champion. Amen. Amen. Above all things living inside of you, so you can face the enemy. Amen. When he comes to get you morning, day, or night, whatever the case may be. Amen. You're able, amen, to stand against the wiles of the enemy. I want to tell you, David didn't have no armor. All he had was a sling. All he had was five smooth stones. No, you know what he had? Amen. He walked out there. Amen. Because he trusted in God. He had faith in God. Amen. It wasn't so much a sling and a stone. Amen. Because he saw, he settled it in his mind, amen, he settled it in his heart, amen, I'm going to defeat this thing, amen, God allowed me an opportunity to slay a bear with my bare own hands, amen, he allowed me to slay a lion, amen, and I lived, what is this enemy before me, but he trusted in a God he could not see, he touched, amen, the throne of glory, why did he do that, because he had a heart, amen, yes, he failed God but he had a heart that was after God's own heart that he loved God so much that if he would fail he would pick him back self up by falling on his knees how do you pick yourself back up church fall on your knees get into the presence of God pour out your heart pour out your mind pour out your soul unto God and see God do the manifestation in your life let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over the house here tonight praise be to God Hallelujah. I want to tell you, church, uh, who's willing to show up? Uh, I'm not talking about just coming to church, uh, filling a seat, uh, amen, and then saying, yeah, I showed up to church. Uh, no, I'm talking about showing up, uh, amen, with expectation, uh, showing up, uh, expecting to see God move. Uh, just as Brother Douglas said, uh, expecting, amen, something greater. Uh, amen, this is a Wednesday night Bible study. But look, we're having 10 minutes of fire. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, it's telling what God wants to do. Uh, amen just to, before you leave this place uh, amen if you allow him uh, amen to move and manifest his spirit into your life uh, amen and it's not just Wednesday uh, it's not just Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday uh, but I want to tell you it's got to be an everyday thing uh, amen it's got to be an everyday uh, it's an everyday battle uh, but I want to tell you amen child of God you can make it uh, you can do this thing uh, amen how can you do it brother Titty uh, when you fall on your knees uh, and you worship God.
with all your heart and you put all your soul into this thing and you choose in your mind that come what may I'm not going to throw in the towel and I'm sure they're not going to give up but I'm going to serve him because he deserves it because I love him because I want to be with him because he wanted to be with me he wanted to be with you when you close your eyes at night and when you're sleeping the God of heaven and earth is right there at your bedside amen waiting on you to wake up again to call on his name because he wants to hear from you praise be to God hallelujah Amen and amen. I want to tell you. Amen. It doesn't matter. Amen. What the doctor says. Amen. It does not matter. Amen. What anybody, as far as the enemy says, as far as the noise of this world, when the enemy says, amen, you've got cancer. When the enemy says, oh no, you've got sugar diabetes. Amen. When the enemy says, amen, you're just, you're going to fail. Amen. It's when, child of God, you begin to show the enemy and you begin to let the spirit Spirit of God uh, begin to arise in you, uh, and you tell the devil, uh, amen, you tell the noise of this world, uh, amen, and you tell him, greater, uh, greater is he that is within me uh, than he that is in this world, uh, because uh, if you've got the Holy Ghost, uh, you've got the champion of all champions uh, living on the inside of you so you can face every battle, uh, amen, and hallelujah, nobody would go to the valley but David, uh, amen, why would you want to go to the valley, David? Uh, David, why would you want to go to the valley? Because it's in the valley. Amen. As Pastor Thomas has preached before, where the weapons of your warfare is found. But I want to tell you, God sent me in the valley. Because in the valley is the transformation. Amen. When Why would you want to go through the storm? Brother Good, and it's because in the storm. Amen. God is in the midst of the storm. God is with me when I walk through the valley. God's with me when I'm in the storm. Amen. He was in the storm with Peter and the disciples. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you. Amen. We can do this thing. We can face it. Amen. It's time we get up. It's time we shake ourselves. Amen. And it's time we allow God to be our true focus. Amen. And it's a time that we begin to worship Him. Even when they say you got a bad report, you look at the you look at it and you say, No, I come to thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I come to this. I'm holding on to the hand to the hand of God that does not fail. Amen. If God God could have just caused a massive heart attack to Goliath. Amen. He could have fell, he could have fell down over instantly. But I want to tell you, that wasn't God's plan. Amen. He wanted to use somebody whose heart, amen, was willing to say, I'll go. If no, if not even the king wants to go, I want to go. Amen. I want to go. Do you want to make it? Do you want to go, church? Then worship God. Amen. Give him all that you God, uh, praise him like you never done praised him before. Uh, amen. And see God move uh, in your life. Uh, praise be to God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over the house here today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's stand for our feet. Amen. I appreciate so very, very much. Amen. Uh, all of the messages that brought here tonight, and I do feel like there was there was unifying message here. Amen. And I, I'm just so very thankful for, for the ministry that God has put in this church. Amen. Some, some's, uh, you know, just uh, getting better and better and better all the time. And I'm so very, very thankful for that and all that God is doing. Praise God. Anybody got any special comments? Anything they felt? Are you ready to walk away? <laughs> Amen. No, it was wonderful and I appreciate each and every one. Amen. I'm thankful for for all that God does. And I'm thankful for what God is about to do. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We're looking forward to great things in the Lord. As we get ready to dismiss here, tonight, I want to continue uh, to, you know, to bring everybody's attention. You know, We need to bind together and pray for our president. Pray that God's hand would be upon them. And, and you know, Sister Tasha Sizemore mentioned that tonight there's, you know, uh, there is a, an upheaval that's going on in Louisville right now. And it doesn't matter what you know, uh, what's going on around stuff, you know, uh, there's not going to be any peace. You know, there is uh, the, the stage is being set for the returning of the Lord. And, uh, and we need to understand that. But uh, let's do hold our president up before the Lord in prayer just in a very special way. Okay? Amen. Sister Thomas, you got any comments?